What's going on guys? Twig and Timber Outdoors and today I'm going to show you how to rig one rod to catch trout in many different scenarios and situations. So what I have here for you today is this is an ultralight rod, seven and a half foot. If you can find a seven and a half foot, that's great. Seven foot will work as well. Typically, I like to tell people an ultralight will work really well for most situations, that because that'll allow you to throw things down as far as a, you know one thirty second in weight, and that's typical for small streams as well as slow water, um, as well as some of the smaller spoons and rooster tail type lures that you can find. Now, trout fishing doesn't have to be expensive. This Mitchell right here, this is the Avocet right here, and I think it was less than $30, seven and a half foot uh, ultra light for less than $30 with a combo reel. This reel holds four pound line or 0.2 millimeter at 110 or 100 yards. Lined on this reel right now is six pound line. Uh, you can go as low as four pound, as high as eight pound, but six pound monofilament is my typical utilitarian style line for trout rods on an ultralight rod. Now there are many styles of fishing that incorporate this type of rod or a fly rod even if you really wanted to. But to break it down, you can do some of the same types of techniques you would on a fly rod that you would on a spinning rod and vice versa. First thing I want to show you is right here at the end of my rod I have a fly. This is a crawfish, crayfish style pattern that is weighted and now it has a sculpt and head on it so it's fairly heavy as well as a little tiny bit of split shot. Now you can nymph this fairly easily with a thingamabobber style float, and that works great. Another option might be to attach your six pound line to a little circle swivel, run a colored piece of monofilament down to, again, another swivel or tippet ring, and then attach a leader to whatever nymph or small plastic or worm you want to use. And we use what's called tight line nymphing. A great tight line nymphing video will be in the link below. Uh, it does use a fly rod, however the principles are the exact same on a spinning reel. And this in my opinion is one of the most effective because it gives you a tight exact feel of the bottom and it lets you feel all the ticks and different bottom bounces as you move along. Whenever you see the cider or color mount of filament uh, either go taut or it um, kind of moves in a different direction, you know you have a fish on and you set the hook. Now this allows us to use different lures and baits, but it also allows us to use flies. And in the wintertime, trout rarely eat many things other than midge or coronament patterns, which are the only constant food source other than forage items such as bait fish or crawfish, you name it. Now to switch from my nymphing rig to say a spinner rig or a spoon rig or a rooster tail rig, all I do is I remove the joint in which I have my colored cider or the or the joint in which I have my colored uh, float bobber and I attach my spinner. Same rod, same reel, same line, but for aggressive strikes you might want to consider using a tougher line. Both aggressively fishing, you know, spinning patterns or even some streamer fly patterns with this will require just a little bit of weight. On an ultralight rod, spinning reel, it requires very little inertia to start up your cast, and if you're fishing small streams, the casts aren't very long. So to get the most out of your rod, think of your rod in a way that all you need is a tiny bit of weight, enough to get yourself low enough to the fish in the current, while still maintaining sensitivity when you feel the bottom for nymphs and fish, or whenever you cast your reel out and you're working back your rooster tail or your spoon or spinner. Hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on the fact that one rod can do it all. And don't shy away from using some feather and fur pattern flies in certain situations, especially when the bite on worms, the bite on grubs, and the bite on some of your soft plastics and spoons aren't quite working. Hopefully this was a good tip. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out the other videos in the playlist, and until next time guys, catch you guys on the flip side, tight lines, and we're out.